What's up to all my freelancers and creatives? This is Nathan with another episode of Freelance Jumpstart TV. And in this episode, we celebrate one full year on YouTube. This year marks one full year of me being on YouTube. So I'm happy and proud to celebrate the fact that I made it one year on YouTube, but I wanted to explain a little bit of what I learned by being on this YouTube channel and how it kind of came about. As I mentioned in a previous video, I first started podcasting. That was my goal, to have a podcast. And I have that, and it's an audio and video form. But first in this inception, it was just a video podcast. I soon found that video files on iTunes and other podcasting systems were quite large, you know, 200 to 300 megabytes. And I needed a better place to show my videos besides just iTunes. So since YouTube was free, free video hosting, I was able to build a channel, build a library. It seemed like the best thing to do. Getting on YouTube meant one big thing. I would then split my audience. That would mean that I'd have video content on iTunes over here, but I'd also have video content on YouTube over here. And they're pretty much the same type of videos. I do release some unique content that's only on YouTube, but it's two different audiences. I knew I wanted to be on YouTube because the world's first and largest search engine is Google. And the one that is right behind it is YouTube. That may not be intuitive, but people also use YouTube as a way to search for things and also as a way to learn how to do things. So it just becomes another search channel. And since Google owns YouTube and they talk and work together, it just made the most sense to get on YouTube. So though my audience was split, you know, I noticed that the crowds are a little different. YouTube audiences behave one way, the iTunes audience behaves another, right? Um, I did know and see that YouTube, you know, it was easier to upload video and the way they encode it makes it load and run faster and it just worked better. There's more options to show levels of quality. So YouTube is a place to go. If you're making any type of video content or plan to do it in the future, YouTube, because it's at no cost, is the quickest and best way to go. And I would say definitely put your content there. So the first thing I learned by being on YouTube is I had to ask myself one major question. And that question was, do I want to be a YouTuber? Now what I mean by this is YouTubers tend to only put their videos on YouTube and they are highly engaged with the audience on YouTube and they connect with the community here and they read all the support documents and learn how to just optimize their channel and grow their audience on YouTube. This question also comes up because normally YouTubers make their money off of ads on YouTube. They either have a pre-roll ad before their video shows or maybe they have a long video and then there's a commercial or an ad halfway or you know a fourth of the way through or maybe they just have a regular video and little ads pop up you know, in the lower vertical third of their screen, you know, cause that's how they make money or monetize their channel by, you know, selling people's attention. Knowing all those things, I realized that I personally did not want to be a YouTuber. I didn't want my content to be only on YouTube. Um, in the previous video I did about podcasting, I mentioned what was the best way for me to reach an audience. So I spread my net wide and just looked and observed for what communities were the most active. And YouTube is a active community, so I'm gonna stay here. But for me, in answering that question, am I gonna be a YouTuber? No, you know, I had it on iTunes, I had it on YouTube, plus all my content is on my own personal website as well. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't be a YouTuber, but for me, I didn't wanna have any ads because I wanted just to give value to whoever's watching and I felt ads took away from that. Another thing I learned is YouTube is the best place to go to use shareable video content. You know, I've hosted videos as I've mentioned on my video podcast. I hosted them on Facebook video as a test. I put some videos on Twitter and Instagram, but the best by far is YouTube, right? So as I mentioned, Instagram, you can't put long videos on there. It's just not really formatted for that. So the best place to do a long video, uh, by long, it can be hours, 
or it can even be, you know, 10 minutes. It can be five minutes to one minute. So YouTube is the most versatile. So if you're looking for a place and you want shareable videos, then I definitely would recommend, you know, using YouTube. Uh, Facebook is also a good place. I have noticed that Facebook is biased to its own type of video. So if you do a video, definitely upload it to YouTube because that's the best place. But if you really have a Facebook community or a Facebook audience, upload it to Facebook as well, or at least a different version of it to Facebook and share it with that audience because it will go further than if you were to take a YouTube video and share it on Facebook. Another thing I learned on YouTube is people love to be entertained. I mentioned in my last video that I've been very professional and I've been holding back somewhat, but people love to be entertained on YouTube. It doesn't matter if you're talking about something serious or if you're just making a goofy cat video, whatever it might be, people love to be entertained or at the least, if you're teaching something, your style has to be something that holds people's attention. So people are very quick on YouTube to watch a video. If they don't get what they're looking for in the first 30 seconds, they're bound to leave. So no matter what you do, um, set it up to where you get people's attention somewhere within the first 30 seconds, really within the first 10 seconds, because it has to be something that draws them in, it's entertaining, and something they wanna move forward with. Uh, another thing I learned is YouTube loves to develop their product and make it better. Uh, one thing that you cannot see, which is really to the front right over here, is I have a TV and connected to that TV is a Apple TV. So sometimes I literally watch TV on my Apple TV, no pun intended. But I watch YouTube on it and I did look at different videos and it, it has my history and it's synced up to everything I looked at. So a lot of times I do watch content on my TV from YouTube and it already easily integrates with Apple TV, for example, or my PlayStation that's over there and, and things of that nature. There's some DVD players and some smart TVs. They already have YouTube built into it. So YouTube is definitely always expanding its integration not only that, but they've done a great job in working on the platform. So things are getting better, videos are getting better. Um, I just got a new feature on my channel. The end card of this video will look different than what it has been. So they're always upgrading and they're investing in their products. So now is like the great and high and hot time to really put content on YouTube. So if you've been thinking about it, wondering, now's the time to hop on. And the last thing I learned while being on YouTube is simply, you have to be consistent. I mentioned this on podcasting, but the same thing goes for video content. You have to be consistent. You have to commit to at least releasing something once a week, twice a week, but really something on a weekly basis at the least. The most successful people on YouTube are those who release multiple videos a week. Uh, some people will go as far as to releasing a video every day. So if you're gonna do something like that, make sure to batch your content, record more than one video at a time, or record something to where you have a part one, two, three, and spread it out. But whatever it is you're going to do, consistency is key. So it goes the same for podcasting, but it goes the same for YouTube. One goal that I have for the future is to do more collaborations invite different YouTubers to say something on my channel that relates to the content I'm talking about, but also for me to go on other people's channel and make different types of content. As I mentioned, people love to be entertained. Thank you once again for checking out this video. I greatly appreciate it. As always, there are show notes for this particular episode. You can go to freelancejumpstart.tv slash 53 slash 53, because this is episode 53, and you can look at those show notes and read those there and go deeper into the content. So as I mentioned earlier, if nothing else, start creating video and just getting consistent because it's gonna take time for people to get with the vision of what your channel is about. As I mentioned, it's one year on YouTube for me and I am just now starting to get people to make consistent comments, right? And I had to do it for a year after 50 episodes, but Start making content, start getting into Google, start getting into search engines, and just start putting yourself out there. I will catch you in the next one. See ya.